they're they're sort of he so the not Tom Hardy guy is sort of mocking. Before before that scene, he's he's been sort of mocking. Because he's a robot. Uh, yeah, because he because he's a robot, and he's like, "How are your lessons going?" and and like in lang- different languages and stuff like that. So but he's I'm... he's been mocking him since like they met. Um. So. So yeah, Naomi, Rapace, Rapace, and not Tom Hardy have sex. Just they have sex, and then what happens is he wakes up in the morning. Checks his, he's like, checks his eye, and you see like a little sort of like insect, like a worm inside his eye. Thing. It's pretty cool. I yeah, it's it's like it's it's a good a good effect, and and um, what what happens? They they go <laughs> they go out to the to the thing to find the other two. Um, and the guys that died with the worm and the yeah, weak yeah. acid for the punk rock guy and the glasses guy that yeah. goes with them because they haven't radioed in after the storm's passed. No. So what happens is they find the body of the glasses man, the glasses scientist, and they they say shit, he's dead. What happened to him? All the while, not Tom Hardy is dying. He's literally like. His face is like changing, and he's getting all the black sort of lick, yeah. like stuff, like the, like the engineers did. He's getting that, and they're like, "Shit, you okay?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm fine." Yeah, I'm totally fine. And then they, they sort of rush back to the ship. All the while, Vickers, uh, Charlize Theron's character, says that oh, you're not bringing him on board. No yeah. way. So they, she. They, they just, uh, abandon their operation. They're like, oh yeah, they must be dead. They take this um, not Tom Hardy back to the ship because he's just falling over and just dying. <laughs> and she she brings out a flamethrower and like Mac, yeah, Mac wants the flamethrower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mac wants the what? Um, but he he gets she gets the flamethrower out and she's like, don't come on board, don't come on board. She's being smart. Yeah, she's being smart. That is a smart move. You don't know what's on, what what he's got. So everyone apart from him, you know, on board the ship now. Um, but then it's not Tom Hardy, guys. Like, uh, kill me. I've had enough. It's yeah. Like, wait, what? You don't want to cling to life? You you have a girlfriend who or a wife? I don't know if it's ever said which one. Yeah. Who you care about, and he's just like, no, kill me. So she cooks the bitch, just there and there, in front of everyone. And then uh, Shaw, Numi Rapace, breaks down. Then it fades to white. Because she's like, no, no, I love him. I can't leave, live without him. And So she she wakes up on, on like, the same table this head exploded on. Yeah, she's like on this kind of futuristic operating gurney kind of bed thing. I don't think I don't it's even a, a, an oper- a like an operation. It's more a doctor's sort of examining board. Oh yeah, and the, you've got David standing around her. And is it every? Is it the like, the other crew, or is it just David? I think uh, it's just David. I think, and yeah. he's like saying, "Oh, di- uh, did you have intercourse with?" Because they're scanning everyone with, like, blood work to make yeah. sure that this infection, that the guy who was just burnt, hasn't spread onto the ship. So that's what they're checking her for, but yeah. Okay. And and she's like, well, um, yes, but that was only a couple of hours ago. Well, you're pregnant. Yeah. Three months pregnant. Well, that can't be, because I only had sex with him last night. Well, you're three months pregnant, but it's an abnormal fetus. It is not a normal fetus. And you're like, oh shit, this is going to get bloody. Yeah. Um, then, then what happens is David puts more anaesthetic in her because she's like freaking out that she's pregnant with an alien baby. Um, then what happens is she wakes up, or she doesn't wake up. The two guys, the two scientists like in quarantine suits, like radiation suits, come in and slap her stupid to try and wake her up. Um... <laughs> But she doesn't, but she doesn't, doesn't wake up, so they think, all right, we'll take her somewhere. We'll take her into cryosleep. 
she gets she gets up, she whacks one of them with she whacks both of them with this thing where we don't know where it came from how she got it but she whacks them both yeah she gets knocked out and then she starts running through the ship because well, we, we should have explained this by the way Charlie oh, Theron has these kind of chambers she has these quarters of the ship that it's like, a, like decked out with everything it's like got a bar it's got a grand piano it's basically like a kind of life preserve it's chamber, like a panic room. Yeah, it's yeah, a like, separate, separate ship. ship. Yeah. yeah. It's a separate it's ship, so it, it, this, it, if something goes wrong, you can all go inside and it's it's a separate ship. And it. Uh, and within this ship, there's, she's got this medical table, which is like set up for like foreshadowing towards the start of the film. And it's um, this operation thing that can do anything, we're told at the start. Okay. But... But, carry on. The plot hole here is that these are in Charlize Theron's, like, bit yeah. thing. She's a woman, yet it's she clearly says it's for men. Yeah. It's a, it only operates on male things. Male people. It wants this, babe, this alien abomination out of her, because it's growing at, like, an exponential rate, and she's like, I, I need a cesarean. I don't think David wants to do it because, again, he's curious. He's like, oh, no, I want to see what happens. Yeah. So but she breaks out. She runs to this operating machine, Charlie Theron's quarters, to have a cesarean. And the machine says that it's only for male patients. Well, yeah, I don't... Operations. It's like, why would she even... She's a woman. Why would she even have that in her quarters? I'm if... questioning the gender of Charlie Theron thereafter. <laughs> which was quite disturbing, but... Maybe she's a robot. Maybe, Maybe. That she gives a robotic performance. <laughs> it's like unknown specimen, like meaning that she's a female. Yeah. Pick a different surgery. She's like massive abdominal trauma. Go, and then it's like the claw from Toy Story just comes down, just friggin' buzz saws are open across the abdomen and just reaches in this these kind of like big crude metal forceps. This happens. This all happens. Yeah. No anaesthetic. No though. anaesthetic. He's not even knocked out. How would you even survive that with no anaesthetic? It, like, it doesn't even do it like um, a small, slow incision. It's just no, it, it cuts it cuts all across, all across the stomach. Yeah, and it just reaches in these massive metal grabbers and just rips out this freaking alien squid and just leaves it hanging above her. Yeah. And it's just writhing and just making alien death screams. And then it brings out a friggin' staple gun. It, it, oh. And staples her, her stomach back together. And it, it's like, she gets, she gets, and gets out, and how she would be able to run around having experienced that. Yeah. How? Like, oh, I, I no, rest, no rested in bed for days, weeks on end to recuperate. No, yeah. she just kept she up. Just, she just sprinting through all these corridors. But then I don't, I don't get it because this thing's still in there. And then yeah, yeah. Is it just left in there in, the, in, in Char- Charlie Theron's like quarters in this medical thing? It's just left hanging there. This big, this little tiny alien square yeah, thing. Yeah. But surely Charlie yeah. Theron would go in and find it. Well, was, they, was that just like a panic room, so she'd only go in there in case of emergency, or was that where she lived? I don't, I, I don't know. It's never explained. <laughs> I don't think it's explained very well. Um, uh, right, as she's running through these corridors, just like with a staple across her stomach, she opens the door and um, she finds Guy Pierce. Pete, is it Peter Whalen? Yeah, Peter Whalen. In the worst old man makeup. I wouldn't say... I didn't think it was that bad. No, actually, well, it, it's bad. Because Peter Wayland is in cryo sleep. Didn't he create David? He created. He created yeah. So Wayland is inside, like a chamber, the, the same chamber that there is. But He's on the ship this whole time. And that's that's the thing. At the beginning credits, the opening credits, Guy Pearce's name is like third. On the list, you knew me replace Michael Fassbender, then you get Guy Pearce. Yeah. That is the; those are the three starting names of the opening credits. And uh, he doesn't appear until like the three quarter mark. No. Um, but then he. But I question 
how how is he even able? How is David able to talk to um, uh, Wayland if he's in cryosleep, and if and if it's established that he has only a few days to live? Yeah. Well, I, d- I really don't understand. And surely how weak and feeble everyone was when they came out of cryosleep, surely yeah. that would have just finished Guy Pearce off. It, yeah, it, it would have. And then <laughs> he's like... Uh, it's, and then he goes... That David goes to the ship. Well, he goes to, back to the caves. He, they they all go on an expedition. Go looking around. I think it's just him who goes, isn't it? Well, this is before the go with Guy Pierce. Yeah. Going back. Yeah, he, and he, he finds that... Place, and yeah. then he finds out that it's a ship. Yeah. And that there's um, a... Um, what is it called? Engineer in cryosleep. Yeah. That's before that, um, she has that operation. Yeah, that's before. So then he he, he must come back to the ship, because he's there. Yeah. Um. So he, he tells Guy Pierce, oh, there's one of them still alive. Uh, and he's like, oh, okay, well, I want to go talk to him. So he, he, he they, everyone gets suited up. Yeah. And it's like, uh... They put him in this suit where he can walk. Yeah, yeah. That was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you just bring a wheelchair and, or carry him? Why is it, don't let, don't let the, a, a guy who's about to die in a couple of days walk around. Yeah. Surely that would kill him as well, getting up and actually walking. And then we drop a plot point which has no bearing on the plot, no bearing on character development, and in fact was I kind of saw it coming, but it doesn't serve anything to the plot. It turns out that Charlize Theron is Guy Pierce's daughter. Yeah. And you're like, okay, and that's important because <laughs> it, it, it didn't serve anything. It, yeah. No, it, it it really didn't. Um... It was, it just, it just like, it was like, it came out of nowhere. And... It didn't need to be in the plot. Because they can't, I suppose they set it up earlier because I think she, does she grab David and like, what did he say or something? Yeah. Because she wants to know, she obviously doesn't get on with her dad, but it didn't do anything to plot. It didn't have any, it didn't serve any point. No. It really, it really didn't. And then they get attacked by a friggin' zombie five field. Oh yeah, that that happens. They're leaving. As this is as they're leaving to go and find this one in cryo sleep to ask it questions. They just go out of their quarters and then they get attacked by the punk dude who got weak acid sprayed in his face earlier on in the film. Yeah. He attacks him. He's a zombie now. Yeah, he he's a zombie and he comes back and kills loads of people. So Idris Elba grabs a flamethrower and burns the shit out of him, like, <laughs> which I, I found quite funny. Um, so that that actual I I don't understand why that how he was what made him turn into a zombie in the first place. I don't see why that part. I suppose the film needed another action beat. I guess maybe it's going for like a sci-fi action film. There really isn't a lot of action in it. No, it's not just a lot of people just standing around looking at alien goo and talking about it. Mm-hmm. So they probably thought, oh crap, the 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 audience is probably switching off. Uh, throw a mutated zombie punk in there. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. Um, um but then that happens. I just over burns him. Yeah. And then they and then they leave. 